One of the most common phrases used in the reptile hobby is belly heat, and what that actually refers to is the animal receiving heat from below to warm them up, whether that's a leopard gecko or a royal python or a king snake. Now what this actually means in scientific terms is something called thigmothermy. From the Greek word thigmo roughly translates to touch or touching, and thermi with a combining form meaning heat or heat generation. Animals that utilise this way of warming up are referred to as thigmotherms. Thigmotherms are typically species considered nocturnal or crepuscular. Surfaces radiating energy that a species may use via conduction, i.e. their belly touching the surface, are radiating a long wavelength of infrared energy. And what infrared energy is, is the wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum of light that we commonly associate with heat. Typical objects radiating this energy are called black body projectors. This can be anything that has been warmed by the sun's rays directly in nature. This energy is absorbed until the object reaches its maximum threshold and it is re-radiated at a longer wavelength. In a very simple way, it can be described as a short, intense, high energy wavelength from the sun's rays are being absorbed and radiated by objects at a longer, weaker, meandering wavelength. For example, toka geckos, a species known for being nocturnal, are often seen basking in broad daylight. As have many snake species, even the animal most regularly championed as needing belly heat is to be seen making regular use of the broad spectrum of sunlight, as Joe from J2B Reptiles will tell you. For the past few years, the only heating sources that I've used with my leopard geckos have been overhead heating sources, and in that time I've come to realise that they will regularly sit directly underneath a tungsten halogen heat lamp once they're settled into the surroundings. My boldest leopard gecko, Speckles, will bask openly almost every single morning, and my shire females, although they don't come out quite so often, do still make regular appearances during the daytime. It certainly is not true that leopard geckos don't understand the concept of warmth coming from above, which is a falsehood commonly, and unfortunately, spread amongst reptile keepers. It's important for me to stress that my leopard geckos don't have to expose themselves to the radiation provided by the lamps, because the rocks in their enclosure will still provide them with belly heat throughout the night, as Liam's going to talk about in a minute. No, they are choosing to bask in the open during the daytime for a reason, and who are we as reptile keepers to deny them the opportunity to do this? Now there is a reason that snakes bask on tarmac roads because the road is radiating lots of long wave infrared energy even after dusk. For nocturnal and crepuscular species, charging up before the midnight hunt is natural, so there's no disputing that thigmothermy is a part of some species' natural history. But before we hail heat mats and cables as the best thing since sliced bread, there's also a reason that thigmothermic species openly come out to bask in the sun on particularly sunny days in spring and autumn, because they're receiving the most efficient form of energy possible, shortwave infrared energy from the sun directly. This is because shortwave infrared passes the scales of reptiles much more efficiently through the skin, through the fat tissue, and it reaches the blood vessels, and that warmed blood gets pumped around the rest of the body. It's much more efficient than longwave infrared, as it barely passes the scales. Belly heat is the least efficient way of a reptile warming up. The typical routine you may experience with something like a snake is directly basking under the sun at dawn to warm up and get the engine going, and as the intensity of the sun rises and peaks at midday, the snake will have already moved off to more covered areas less exposed. As the intensity of the sun wanes, snakes come out after dusk to bask again to use what's left of the sun's rays. It's at this time that snakes may bask on rocks or logs that are now radiating that heat received from the day. If you provide a near-infrared heat emitting heat source, your captive reptiles will express the same behaviour. That's why it's better to provide a heat lamp during the day, as any rocks or objects under the lamp will perform the same natural cycle, and those rocks will perform the same role as something like a heat mat. If you provide a basking light over a rock, then your reptile, regardless of the species, is receiving the best of both worlds. It has the option to fully bask under the lamp during the day and during the night when the basking light goes off, 
the rocks carries on offering belly heat throughout the night and gradually decreases throughout the night and into the early hours of the morning until the basking lights are turned on again and the cycle repeats. This is a much more natural cycle and it actually replicates what goes on in nature. So providing belly heat isn't necessarily wrong, it's just unnatural to have that as the only heat source. Far infrared energy is the only available heat at night in nature. So a heat mat or a ceramic heat emitter are in theory the most suitable heat types for nighttime heat. But what you'll find is, is that unless your vivarium is in a super cool area, like a garage, or you live in a super cold climate, the rocks in the enclosure will emit all the nighttime heat a reptile will need. You'll be surprised if you provide something like a really thick piece of slate, how much that clings on to that heat and retains it throughout the night. Near infrared light has been shown in studies to increase ATV in mitochondria and that is needed for cellular metabolism. Near infrared increases retinal ATV in old mice and reduces inflammation and aids in healing. It reduces retinal decline with age and may even extend lifespan. There's a reason infrared light is used in medical lamps and is also used in the equine industry to treat horses. Often when a horse has an injury, they direct a heat lamp onto that area to aid in healing. I know granted these studies are not on snakes or leopard geckos, but the potential for the long term health benefits to apply to them is there. So in summary, the benefits of using a heat lamp are, it warms the animal much more efficiently, digestion is more efficient because it's been warmed more efficiently, it has healing properties, it reduces cellular ATB decline, it reduces inflammation, it may even extend lifespan and it heats the rocks below to give the belly heat anyway. As it stands, there is no associated health benefits from long wave infrared. It may keep them warm enough to function, but that's about it. Considering you get the belly heat as a byproduct of using a heat lamp anyway, it seems a no brainer to me.